Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to all members of the public and council. First, brief health and safety introduction. We are not expecting a fire drill, but if the alarm does sound, please make your way to the nearest fire exit. The emergency exit is at the back of the chamber. We'll take you across the roof and down the fire escape. Take care, it may be slippery and wet. Or, if you can exit the way you entered the building through the police station and out the front door. If it's not possible to get to the exit, then the lift lobby is a safe safety zone in the event of a fire. Under, under no circumstances should the lift be used. Please make sure that all mobile phones and devices are switched off or on site. Any individual wishing to record the meeting may do so from the seats reserved in front of the public gallery. Please remember, anybody wishing to speak in the public participation part of the meeting should raise their hand and wait for me to chair to get an objection from you to carry on. And one other thing, on the seats where you are sitting is uh, guidance for public participation at the meetings. I would like you to read them, please. And welcome, Mr. <laughs> Would your train on time? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for absence. Uh, Councillor McLean and Police Sergeant Rollins. Okay. Disclosure of interest. To deal with any disclosure by members of any disposable pecuniary interest and interests other than unitary interest, as defined under Seaford Town Council Code of Conduct and the Local Act 2011, in relation to the matters on the agenda. Item 3. Public participation. To do with any questions or brief representations from member of the public in accordance with standing order 3 and Seaford Town Policy. <coughs> Um, I'd like to make a comment on a couple of points, if I may. Um, firstly, the phone panels on the view. We've got a big thumbs up for that. Don't know why it wasn't done on Georgian and May, but anyway. <laughs> um, with regard to the salts, I'm a little bit concerned because a lot of the things that come up in the agenda item are paid for activities. At the moment, everything down there with the skate park and things are all free. And that's why they're used as they are now. <laughs> to suddenly put a charge on, I think you're going to limit the amount of people that can use the place from the town. From the town. As far as skate parks go, um, <coughs> a lot of our skaters are now open Brighton anyway, A, because it's free, and B, because it's a bigger, better park. So what we need to do is attract them back here, and also the skaters from New Haven as well, because they're all moving on. So that is that thing. <laughs> um, to, go with the, to go with that, <coughs> Trees, you've got a report from the tree warden, no trees are being put in the salts. Several people asked at the time the um, play park was developed and no trees are there. So could we kind of bring that up, that trees are put down there, it would make a good sort of natural shade for kids as we're getting up to summers. Okay, um, clerk's report. <clears throat> Item 1.31, land transfer to STC. Um, to ask New Haven Port to transfer some land onto the seafront for free to STC. Brilliant. Details are being drafted and will be submitted to Council for consideration. Can the clerk tell us if this proposal is with a view to reciting the amenities currently at the Buckle Car Park? Can we be advised of the area in question? And will a public consultation take place in any form? prior to Council's deliberation so that the public can, be, can advise councillors of their wishes and enable an informed vote. Basically, um, quite a few there, thank you. Um, the, the ones in the salts, uh, the development plan for the salts includes some trees, so there will be trees planted in the salts um, in due course. They're not being put in as yet because there's so much civil work to go on in there that the roots would be in the way for if we put them in the wrong place 
we damaged them, you know, they just wouldn't uh, be tolerated. We've also got to be very careful which trees we put in because of the, the conditions there, the wind in the winter. But there is, uh, they are in the development plan, there will be trees going in in due course. Um, the proposals with Wave Leisure, yes, some of the potential classes and um, provision they may be challenged <coughs> for, but the vast majority of stuff is free. Um, it's not it's not aimed at uh, providing a, a ledger facility where you pay charge for everything. Um, it opens up a lot of doors for, for income in other ways. Um, there will be some activities that pay for, but there will be additional activities, not what we have now. <coughs> um, the activities we have now will remain as they are. The ones that are supposed to be paid for, you'll pay for, and the ones that aren't paid for, you won't pay for. So it's not going to change in that way. Um, New Haven Park, the bit of land, there's no plans to use the land for anything at this stage. Uh, it's very early days, um, and it's, in, in all honesty, that bit of land is, is taking a, a back burner because of other priorities at the moment. Um, we will be looking at it uh, imminently, uh, but the land in question is, if you were to uh, just look from the, the, the Salem Club where there's a gate that leads onto the promenade, um, from that gate to your left, it's the land there. To the right is the Salem Club's land, and to the left, there's some land on the promenade yeah. there. That's the bit of land we talked about. So that about. go up Bonningster, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah towards Bonningster, but not that far. Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere near as far as Bonningster, oh, okay. but it's, it's a section of the promenade along there. Okay. Um, <coughs> as I said, very early days in the negotiation. Uh, we need to look at that, and then there'll be a report comes back to council uh, in due course. Uh, but there's no proposals to do anything with it other than does the council want to own this land or not? Okay. And then in the future, if the council decides to do something with it, then it can, can do so. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, yeah thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Okay. Christine Black. Um, I'm pleased to see that the lighting will be installed at the View Car Park imminently and note the changes to improve the financial performance. I see that golfers are to be asked for feedback. I request that all those hiring the view for functions should be also be asked for their feedback. It's essential to increase the footfall and bookings if STC is ever to make enough money from the view to stop the losses and give value for money to all the preset payers. At the September Golf Club Committee meeting, there were six Christmas event bookings. How many are there now, please? And I'd like a written reply, which I thought you couldn't give, so I've put my email in for your idea. I'm happy to take them by email. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we, we are doing, uh, the, the consultation with the golfers is ongoing at the moment. In fact, I was at a, a consultation event with the golfers last night. Um, that's progressing. The surveys are coming in. We're getting hard copies and uh, survey monkey as well. We use two mediums to, to maximise the, uh, the number of survey results we get. There's already a, a, a feedback card available to every user in the golf club itself. So anyone who goes in there, there's a feedback card and there's a card and a box to put those in. <coughs> we've we've just collated recently, I think we had about 120 uh, feedback cards. We've just collated the information from those. We're in the process of developing a new feedback card because we realised probably we could do asking some slightly more detailed questions, maybe one or two additional questions as well. Give people more of an opportunity to give us feedback. We're also looking for feedback from um, golf societies who come there, so outside visitors, and also uh, we're looking for feedback from just general visitors as well. So we're going to be doing uh, a number of surveys to get feedback from as many sources as possible. Um, there's going to be a, an open evening for residents as well to come up at the game. We'll be looking for feedback on that night. There'll be hard copies of questionnaires available there. So we are already have in plan. Uh, to receive as much feedback as we can on the facilities up there. Um, the, uh, the other issue was the uh, number of Christmas events. The meeting we said he had six. Uh, we've now, every weekend between in November and December is booked fully now. The only weekend there is an exception is November the 5th. Uh, that's the only, uh, I think that's a Saturday, a Friday or Saturday, I can't remember which one. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday right, so it's the 6th, I beg your pardon. So that's the only vacancy we've got uh, over the, the, the whole of uh, November and December leading up to Christmas now on a weekend and we've got one or two other additional bookings in that. At the moment we're taking roughly um, six bookings a week 
uh, are going through the system at the moment. So the number of bookings that are coming in have increased significantly. Um, but still not where we want to be. But having said that, if you get seven bookings a week, that means the facility is going to be booked every night. So we'd be happy with that. But we are on average taking six bookings a week at the moment in the last couple of weeks. And that's largely due to new marketing. And we, we've employed someone two days a week on a temporary basis as an events uh, manager. And we find that that's having a significant impact in what we're doing there. <coughs> Good evening everyone, it's Sidney uh, I'm referring to the clerk's report, agenda item 6, uh, 1.8, the sort of development, the poor service delivery and completing the new children's play area by the suppliers and contractors plus the Rossborough inspection, highlighting a number of issues. Is there any indication when this will be finalised and the place space to be fit for purpose? 1.23, uh, Southdown Road, is this the lower end that is unadopted? If so, the 10-week full road closure, will this cause major problems for the golf course? And is there any room for changing this with East Sussex County Council? 1.27, any update from the Secretary of State after the Council agreed to do that at the, full, uh, the special full Council meeting? Um, agenda item 8, uh, the Salts Cafe, recommendation 1, should actually read 1st of April 2016. I don't know if anyone has spotted that. Um, agenda item 9, Purdy House 1.14. There's two statements here which seem a bit contradictory. There's a permission to open the cafe in the evenings from 6.30 to 9.30 to enable a youth facility for ages 12 to 18, and then five is to allow a licensed restaurant to operate in the evenings from 7 to 11. I find these two statements very contradictory, so how is this to work? And finally, agenda item 14 which is the exclusion of the press and public. Uh, agenda item 16, the review of the <coughs> council assets. In light of recent events regarding the battle, please would councillors consider the following by carrying out the public interest test before excluding the public. Does the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweigh the public interest in disclosing the information <coughs> or whether the public interest outweighs the exemption? At a recent LDC meeting, the test was carried out and found in favour of the public. The exempt item was discussed in public in a careful manner. This is set a precedent for future exemptions. Agenda item 15 will have to be moved in order to do so, or can you clarify that to exclude the public would indicate that the two items are connected? Please may also ask that a councillor call for a recorded vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, fit for purpose, the play equipment, yes. Um, it is fit for purpose, it's just that there are some issues with it. Um, it's unusual for a playground to ever, well, I've never seen a Rossbury Park come back yet and say that there, there's not a single risk in the playground. You never ever get that. Um, what the concern is is that some of the risks are higher than they should be for a new piece of equipment. So that's that's where we take them to task and say we've got to deliver on this. The other issue is the quality of the groundsmanship. So that's uh, another issue that we take the task on. We, the, the board's not now caught on that one still. It's up to the contractor to deliver on the contract. Um, and, and so far we haven't paid anything. So you know, we still haven't paid because they haven't delivered. Um, South Down Road, uh, I think you slightly mis misunderstood what we're doing there. The 10 weeks is the amount of time it takes for the closure to be advertised. Oh, I see. Not the time it's closed for. Oh, to do the public consultation, which we have to follow, it takes which the county, the highway ferry you have to follow, uh, takes 10 weeks. Um, the actual closure will just be for the odd day. <coughs> it's, it's not a, and yes, for those odd days it will be a problem for the golfers, but it's unavoidable. You know, we, can't, we can't build a bridge while we turn back on the road, unfortunately. Um, the uh, set, the um, update on the secondary still, we haven't had a reply yet, so that's still with and we are chasing that. Head of South, you're right, the, uh, the points do slightly contradict each other. Um, the, the, what the tenant is proposing is it, it's kind of a scattergun approach at this stage to get approval to do whatever he wishes best with the building as far as this is a landlord is concerned, not as a planning authority. So that then in the future he doesn't have to come to us every time he wants to, to look at using it for something different. He can just get on and do it. Uh, so he's not going to use it as a youth club and as a, a cafe on the night at the same time. It would be two different uses of the building that wouldn't be at the same time. Um, ex the, the exclusion of the public, as far as the land sale goes, um, the, the public interest 
in keeping this confidential for now, it does outweigh the public interest in not, in my opinion, because the proposal is to release all of the information at once. Everything that the councillors are going to see tonight, the public will see. It's not that we want to keep this a secret, we don't. But what we want to do is make sure that when the information is released, everything is released at once, and that stops the misinformation passing around, which then creates issues and concerns. We'd rather as an organisation release everything that we have all at once, and the idea is that we will do a consultation, a meaningful consultation on what we release, if the council choose to go ahead with the consultation. That's a matter for the council to decide tonight. Um, I think that's everything. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. Item four, minutes. To note the following minutes approving or not approving recommendations as required. 4-1, Planning and Highways Committee, 10th of September <coughs> 2003, 15, pages 3 to 6. Item five, clerk's report. Oh, sorry, sorry. Four two, full council, twenty fourth of September, two thousand and fifteen, pages to seven to seventeen. Proposer, Councillor Norman, seconder, Carol Campbell, Councillor. All those in favour? Four three, four point three. Planning and Highways Committee, first of October two thousand and fifteen, pages eighteen to twenty two. General Purpose Committee, 15th of October 2015, pages 23 to 24. Motion accepted. Proposer, Councillor Burfield, seconder. Councillor Hager, all those in favour? Item five, report. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, everyone's had an opportunity to read the report. Uh, I, I won't go through it in detail. Um, just like to draw your attention to um, a few things that are moving on um, since we last met. One is the, the trips. I've met with the management committee there with a view to uh, moving forward the self management of the trips, which potentially will save. Uh, taxpayers £5,000 a year as there would be no business rates to pay if that was to happen. Uh, so hopefully that will, will uh, happen in the near future. Um, there's obviously been a lot of work going on at the view, uh, as you can see from the report. Um, a lot of my time, probably 70% uh, of my time since we last met has been actually dealing with issues at the view. We've had um, significant staff changes there. Uh, but I'm pleased to say that the financial footing of the review is a lot better than it was five weeks ago. Um, we, we progress them well, uh, the bookings are increasing, uh, the, the, the profitability is increasing on what we sell, um, and I'm pleased to say that a lot of the staff that we've retained have stepped into the breach and are doing a really good job. 
Um, we've, we've also been very lucky to benefit from, we used Len Fisher for a small while as an events officer there, but Sarah Pierce has stepped into the breach since then on a temporary basis. Uh, and she's doing a fabulous job, so she's been a real asset up there. Um, so we, we continue to improve, uh, and it can only get better, I think, you know, so we're on an upward spiral at the moment. Um, one other thing I would like to mention is something that's just come in today, which uh, obviously we didn't have time to put in the report. Um, just to let you know, the, the assets of community value nominations that we made um, recently, uh, I know people have been asking about this, I did have somebody in this morning before the letter was <coughs> Um, we uh, tended to register car parks as community assets. Those car parks included uh, the Buckle Car Park, Saxon Lane Car Park, Sutton Road Car Park, West Street Car Park and Richmond Road Car Park. Um, I'm pleased to tell you that all of those are being registered as community assets. Yes. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the one that hasn't at the moment uh, is Richmond Road Car Park and that's really just a technicality because that is the one that doesn't 100% uh, belong to the Lewis District Council. So they have to consult with Network Rail on that before they can give us a response. It's just a courtesy, they have to do that. Uh, give the landowner a chance to respond. So they're waiting that response and you know, hopefully that one will be registered as well in due course. So a little bit of good news um, in, in terms of uh, the car parks on the town. I'm open to any questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How does this affect the proposed sale of the Buckle Car Park by Lewis District Council? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know it's we're, maybe we are in a slightly stronger position, and I hope, I hope, I just don't know what's going to happen next to you. <laughs> um, it, it, what I'm not going to give you the impression is, is that it will stop. <coughs> so it, it, it can do that. Um, it can it can help us to um, anybody who wishes to stop the council. If the council wishes to, it can help it to slow the process down and perhaps find another mm -hmm. way to deal with the buckle car park issue. It gives the council an opportunity, a six month window, to, to come up with another solution. Um, but it's a it's a very difficult road to walk, uh, it's not going to be easy, uh, and it only comes into play if the sales are great. So we, there's a lot we need to do on that. Uh, we, In all honesty, this only came in today, so we haven't looked at exactly what we're going to do next. Uh, literally, it literally came in this afternoon, actually, so um, we do need to look at it. But it, 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 it's good news, but it, it, it isn't a victory, you know, it isn't, it isn't the end of the story, uh, as far as the book of car park goes. <coughs> Talk about the Super in Bloom. I know it's come up in the, the committee and is and it's reported here. Um, but could you just clarify what the position is for next year? Is it all being funded by the vote payers or no? Um, that would be a matter for the council to decide yeah. at the um, at the budget setting precept setting process. Um, there, there obviously is a cost to, to, to being careful to keep it going. <coughs> there is no money left in the kitty. Um, the we. Seaford and Bloom used to cost, uh, just the plants used to cost, I think these are really approximate figures, about four and a half, five thousand pounds for the plants, but then there's an additional three and a half, roughly thousand pounds for the watering. Mm. That was paid for by Lewis District, but they withdrew that funding about three years ago. So the, the cost when Seaford and Bloom committee were doing it was only about four and a half thousand a year, but now it's nearer eight thousand a year, so uh, possibly more. We, we, it would depend on what you include in it. Um, so the, there is a cost, but it's a matter for the council to decide in the budget setting process. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <coughs> <laughs> One question, as it sounds like. Um, a few weeks ago, you forwarded a letter from a resident, Mr. Elliot Hill, about um, councillors attending the meetings and finding substitutes. And I think, if I, if I remember very vid vividly, you did say you would put, you would put something in your CAT report about this. Um, and I, I can't find anything in the class report, maybe I'll have missed it, but... Yeah, um, it's paragraph 1-3. Sorry, I beg your pardon, Par paragraph 1-2. Um, oh yeah, I think it's a good part, yes. Can I just 
ask um, the Templar if the pallets have already been removed, because I didn't have the time to come to the source this week. Um, and I would like to see that removed. Well, I'll pass the data. I'm pretty sure they have. Okay. Um, I'm 99% certain. I've well, passed the data, but I, I didn't notice them, so I'm pretty sure they've gone. Okay. But they actually went about a week ago, I think. Um, okay. I think the pallets went earlier and the skip was later. Okay. Um, from memory, from the discussions there for the uh, research manager. Unfortunately, I couldn't come to the source yeah. because of it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, could I ask the town clerk please to clarify the requirements for councillors attending meetings so that everybody's fully aware of what the requirements are? In brief. Um, <laughs> uh, I, th I think the, the, there's, there's no... Obviously, all councillors are volunteers. It's an unpaid role. The, the only legal burden on councillors in terms of attendance is that you attend at least one council meeting every six months. That is the only legal compulsion. If you do not achieve that, then you are disqualified, unless you submit a reason that's accepted by the council within those <coughs> six months. Uh, sometimes that's something like from health or something like that that's kept you from work. But apart from that, there is no legal requirement uh, to attend beyond once every six months. Obviously, there's a moral obligation and there's a responsibility to the electorate's issue. You may wish to, to fail, but that's that's all purely oneself, not nothing legally or nothing enforceable. Does that answer your question? I think, yes, you circulated a brief on that as well. Yeah. I think, just to me. Item 6 District and County Council update. <coughs> Give an opportunity for the update from councillors a district or county level on business and activities that affect Salford and the local area. Um, quick update, just two, two things, just quick update on the last council meeting that we had. We obviously, <coughs> the last council meeting, um, I proposed a motion which was uh, seconded by Council of um, Tony Nicholson, which effectively uh, will be delaying the buckle car park from going ahead. But the motion is that no issue council moves will not apply for planning, will not go to the next stage, which is to apply for planning permission until they can come up with proposals which is acceptable to both the council and the cabinet to set get parking and transport and toilet restrictions. Um, sadly, that will hopefully mean that nothing will happen this year uh, on the Buckle Car Park as planned by New District Council. And also gives us more time, hopefully, together with the work of the town club to look at how we can and delay that from, from going ahead. Second thing as well is that New District Council are um, in an advanced stage of a um, devolution plan, a proposal that will save about one billion pounds a year. Uh, we of course make some savings as a council and one of the ways of looking at of saving the council is to try and merge services with East Bomboro Council and this, the service merger is actually going ahead now and very soon all our back office will be done shared between East Bond and, 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 and Lewis. That means there will be savings of one million pounds. On the county council, that's making the savings by cutting services um, in this respect, making the savings by cutting back office staff and by cutting the, 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 the senior back office staff. Those are the two developments I've got to report. <coughs> um, just to let you know, I went along to a briefing meeting on Tuesday of this district council to look at the proposed ward boundaries, and it's been recommended that the ward stay the same as Seaford. There is a district extraordinary meeting on the 9th of November at 2.30, to vote on the recommendations for district. Um, as you will have an email from Georgia today about the community infrastructure levy charge was voted for to be adopted, which will come into force from the 1st of December. Um, just to clarify why we were a bit 
didn't say so much on the last meeting. About a month ago, I went to Moose District Council to look at the, bu the bundles on the buckle car park, to look at the covenants on the car park. Um, I gave my queries to Moose District, but due to <coughs> Moose District having to obtain legal advice on the title deeds, was not able to mention this at the previous meeting. Um, and about two weeks ago, after about two weeks, I got the confirmation about the restricted covenants regarding height restrictions, which is now in the public domain. But there, but, but, there, but there are ways of lifting the restricted covenants. Um, I was given a question at the Lewis District Council meeting by a resident, um, which was, can we have assurance that there will be council-owned rentable houses specifically in Seaford and when? Uh, the reply I got was that the plan is to build market housing in Seaford which funds council homes in New Haven, Lewis, East Chilterton. And residents of Seaford who are on the housing waiting list will be prioritised with Peace Haven New Haven residents for the New Haven sites. That means residents in Seaford on our waiting list because of a dire need will benefit directly. I uh, suggest that, that was the reply I got from Gillian Marston. Um, and then I also had a meeting with Gillian Marston a few of you last the week before uh, about affordable housing and new homes and asked for the figures for all the people who are on the council housing waiting list in Seaford, just so I've got some information about that. So that's just a brief update um, for me. My concern is, it, can I ask the district councillors a question about the tourist information centre? Uh, this week again, we had a, the tourist information centre closed. Obviously, uh, we heard it was for, because of illness of staff. But I would like to request that our district councillors, please be on top of, of how things are being dealt with with the uh, tourist information centre. If they can borrow someone from here to run theirs when they are short in staff, why can't we have a, a member of their staff here when our staff gets ill? So if you, both uh, Sam and Olivia, can keep an eye on this situation for us at Lewis, I would really, really appreciate because, as you know, it's very important for our town. Thank you. Too long to warm up my notebook, but actually, Councillor Lambert has forwarded on an email. She is chasing this up as well. She's got in contact, and I can't remember the council's name, but, um, but she has followed down an email to say she wants to sort out what's going on with the Tourist Information Centre as well. And she wants assurances that um, it will be looked into and that we can't keep having it not open because it's very. I'm, sorry, I'm just trying to remember because I only read it this morning okay. and I haven't got it in front of me. No um, and she's just trying to make sure. Because she put in there that it's a, it's a community facility and it needs to be kept open, so it is being looked at. Um, and if you, then I can forward you on her email that she sent on to the district council. I think I've been talking to the council about this. I'm talking to both Julia and Max, and to Max. I think I forgot the email I got from Max on Wednesday to the council. So I spoke to. Louis District Council, um, Julian, this morning. There were certain issues, and I think I don't want to go to the time clock. Yet, and, and I, it's a long story, but certain, there were certain mess up on, on Tuesday, which we were aware of. One of the things that Louis District Council has agreed now is that the, the, we've identified about three volunteers in town. Um, one of them is Kevin, Kevin the. Um, so, so now we've got, we've, we've now got, we've, we've got a temporary solution together. We opened up about, about next month. By tomorrow, by Monday, and even we go to the town clerk, which 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 we can formalise. But what we try to find is basically the problem was they didn't have enough volunteers in Seaford, and now we now we've now been able to identify three volunteers in Seaford that have been trained that that are CRB CRB checked. So hopefully this this won't happen again. But rest assured, we are on the case. I've been talking to the town clerk, but I thought there was no need to bombard everyone with an email until we have we've got we've got a solution. But we have town clerk and I have been talking about this together. Just one more question, because I just heard you mention volunteers. Um, I just would like to put my opinion here that uh, I think people should be employed by the um, so I mean, I mean, I mean, Thank you.
Can I ask the yeah. Councillor Nuke a question about the merger between Lewis District and Eastbourne? Is there going to be any effect on the services that are offered in Seaford? I've had several requests from residents about concerns about a reduction in services. Um, <coughs> uh, no, we wouldn't be. Currently, um, all our directors um, are shared between Eastbourne and, 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 and Eastbourne and Lewis. Um, Julian, I think, is shared. Some of the finance directors are shared. All our, all our directors are shared directors. Um, what will happen now, hopefully, and it's hopefully at this stage, I can't, because it's not been approved yet, that the, 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 the chief executive itself will be shared between. So they're, they're, not, they're not front end services that will affect people. They are basically the back end offices. Um, not, uh, that, that, um, but in terms, of the, in terms of the front end offices, there will, there will, there will still be individual um, offices, uh, officers, because the back end um, the, the directors that will be shared. Item 7, electoral review of East Sussex County, County, Sussex County and District to consider report 9715 regarding the Local Government Boundary Commission for England's electoral review of East Sussex County and District, pages 30 to 35. On it. Obviously, it's not. It doesn't affect the, the makeup of Seaford Town Council. It's purely uh, outside the Seaford um, <coughs> Council. It's whether you want to make any observations. It looks like it's going to be more or less status quo in, in, mm -hmm. in the past, as far as as far as this area is concerned. Anyway. Okay. Item Item 8. Policy proposal regarding the Salt Cafe. To consider report 115 presenting a policy proposal regarding the Salt Cafe. Pages 36 to 46. Mr Chair, um, I, I had noticed uh, the typo at the, uh, the beginning there. It should be April 2016, obviously, in recommendation number one. Um, my apologies. Um, the uh, proposal is that um, currently the, the way the cafe operates is that once every three years it's offered for a license to private tenders who then submit their proposal and basically as a rule of thumb goes to the highest bidder. That's proved problematic in the past. We had one person who bid and then found that she couldn't run the business and withdrew and then the previous tenant stepped into the breach and took it on. Um, there have been a number of complaints about the quality of service at the cafe. I don't want to go into that in too much detail in the public arena, but I think um, councillors have probably, I know a number of councillors have come to me about the, uh, the quality there. Um, that's partly to do with the system in all fairness. I think to offer somebody a three year licence, they're not going to invest a great deal in the uh, infrastructure and in the facilities because they're not going to get the money back in the three year period. They've got to be careful how much they invest. Um, this proposal, uh, one of the other issues as well, sorry, is that the support from the cafe to the facilities in the park has been wanting in the past because private businesses want to run their private business. They're not, in all fairness, they're not that interested in, in helping with, for example, running their tennis and running the pitch and put when they have that there and, and helping with any other facilities that we may wish to put in there because in the business, in the uh, development plan, these proposals, for example, to have a, a, min, a miniature golf in there. So again, you need someone to place that. We won't be <coughs> putting an officer down there to manage that. We would want to do that through the cafe. So all of these are issues for as far as taking the development plan goes forward for the park. Um, 
Wave Leisure have expressed an interest in partnering and taking on the a long term lease with the cafe. They would in turn place significant investment into the cafe, which they would get a return on over the period of the lease. They would still run it as a cafe, but they would run it as more. They would look to to have classes there, to they would provide support to events in there. They would get with their connections again, they wave leisure like Lewis District have connections in Eastbourne, so they've just taken over the tennis facility in Eastbourne, for example. So through that, they have a lot of tennis association connections that you bring coaches in, they can do. There's lots of things they can do, which we can't do. We haven't got the capacity to do these things. And there's no cost in theory to the council or to the taxpayer because it's self-funding. The cafe will supplement the, the, the provision of these services because you're not looking to make a profit from the cafe. You're looking to pay the staff and the service income is spent back in the park um, in one way or another in line with the development plan. So in theory, this is very much a win-win. Um, and I have met on a number of occasions with officers from um, WAVE, and they're very committed to the idea. Um, and I'm confident that they will be able to deliver uh, on what they're suggesting in this, in this report. Happy to answer any questions um, and the recommendations there before. I've read the um, appendix A, which way put forward their proposals um, and there's two observations I would make. One is if everything was uh, fulfilled that's in the proposals, uh, very ambitious. But the other thing is the word partnership is used many times in those proposals and I would like to perhaps think how we would be in partnership with them, what sort of structure we would set up to um, implement this partnership. I mean, it's mentioned, I think, about a dozen times in their proposal. So I, I would just ask that question. Um, yeah. If I could just follow up on uh, Councillor Worcester's comment. Uh, I, I think a partnership is probably not the right word to use. I think probably what we need is a is a contract, a service agreement between Wave Leisure and Super Town Council. Um, if it's a 20-year lease, then there needs to be milestones that Wave. Uh, it's a very comprehensive program, as you say, but Wave are required to to meet milestones. I think they're very well qualified. They've got a good track record. They're a four and a half million pound. Uh, a, a year turnover organisation, non-profit charity, and I, I say it's just the sort of organisation we need to do business with. So I'd like to propose that we accept this proposal in principle, but that the town clerk in his negotiations brings back to the council uh, the terms of, maybe heads of terms with regard to the agreement, before the agreement is struck. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, <coughs> Just a couple of points. Obviously, four months ago, the iconic cafe was to be um, located at the Salt area. So, and I note now on 1.2 that it might be located on the, the seafront. But obviously, there's significant old flood defence issues there, and do you see that, do you see that moving forward quite quickly, or is, or is the, the priority for both councils, the city and ourselves, to, to Redevelop the Sox Cafe at the moment. I think it's all past its sell by date. I don't know what, what this with the um, surveys on it. I'm not sure what condition it is. It does to me, it's a very, very tired building, so I don't know if it essentially is being started again. So, it looks as though the other cafe has now moved and it's a bit more dormant. So that's it. First of all, I'd like to thank James for um, the, all the work that's been doing on this event, uh, also our facilities manager. Um, my issue with this is because it's a 20 year lease, it's a very, very long lease, uh, for us to go into a deal like this, I would feel a lot more comfortable if we had some sort of working party to work together with councillors and the town clerk. Um, to see the development then go on. Um, I, as community services chair, would really like to be a lot more involved in this. If, uh, I'm not, I don't want to go over the town clerk, obviously, but uh, um, it's a question of, um, it's a huge 
feel. It's not just something to be um, rushed. Or I, I know that Duncan is fantastic, the CEO from Road Pleasure. Uh, they are incredible people to work with. I've been in touch with him several times, um, not only over this, but over other things. Um, I would really like to propose a motion to set up a working party so we could discuss this in more depth, um, if people would not mind. There's a number of questions I was asked and I answered. Um, the, the, uh, it's a good point about the partnership uh, was raised. <clears throat> I think the partnership side of things comes more in our um, we will continue to put on events in the park, and we'll do that in partnership with the with the uh, Weird Leisure. We'll coordinate with them. So, for example, the, when we had the tour of Britain, and we had the big screen there. We're looking at increasing those more more of those events in the future, and looking at ways to work in partnership with Weird Leisure to perhaps open uh, avenues or doors for funding to come in to help us do those. Um, it's a realistic possibility that we can achieve that. Um, you're right, uh, Councillor Nathan, the, the heads of towns, I think, is crucial, uh, as is milestones. Um, that's something, and, and I accept the point of bringing that back um, in the agreement. Um, I think to try and deal with the point about a, a working group, um, we've got to be fully aware that um, in the period of time between now and this lease actually not being signed, but them taking over the operation of the building, we have got only two council meetings, and we've only got four months, five months, tops. It's March the 31st, it's handover day. Um, so we, we haven't got much time to deal with this. Um, it's a very limited window um, to, to deal with it. So what I would suggest is to move forward is that once we, once we have some heads of terms, we can circulate them by email, by all means, and everyone can have the, the comments and feed those in. But I think what I'm be very concerned about is to we I know from a meeting uh, trying to attempt to have a meeting with Council of Niji recently between now and uh, December the 5th there was one evening where the two of us could meet because we <coughs> were so full and obviously Council of Niji's is as well and, and so I know that between now and December I wouldn't be able to attend a working party meeting so that we've got to be realistic in how we take it forward I think what I would like us to achieve from tonight is if the council want to go ahead with this, is to feed back what the council wants to with and ask them to give us that back. And then we'll circulate that amongst everyone who was interested. And anyone who wants to give comments, we then put that into the mix and come up with a final proposal to bring back to the next council meeting. Um, but that's going to be a big ask to get it all done by then. Because the other issue we've got to deal with is the existing tenant. Uh, if, if the existing tenant, uh, he, 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 we've, got to, we've got to give him fair notice that we're not going to offer this lease, uh, the license again. We've got to be fair to him as well. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Silk Trucks Creation Brand Development Plan is looking at a new complex down on the Silks. How's that going to impact on a 20 year lease with a cafe when there might be another amenity there selling food and drink, etc.? Mm -hmm. we, <coughs> we, we, we have discussed this with um, with, with the uh, Wave Leisure. Um, the same as two different uh, target markets, really. Um, the, the, the iconic cafe is much more of a commercial venture, which would be more of a pub restaurant on the seafront, whereas the cafe within the park would be much more of a community facility with a cafe, food, beverage, not alcoholic, for people who want to go in the park. But we want to have more people going into the park, so therefore we want to have more people using the cafe than do at the moment. Um, it's two different groups of people, two different target groups, really, uh, that, you know, that we're aiming for. Um, just a couple of questions, please, if I may. Um, just reading through the report, it's, it seems to me that the proposal is to take over the management of the soul's repression ground, not just the cafe, in terms of them providing tennis in the skate park. Um, again, looking through the report, it does seem that some like the skate park that's currently free would, would no longer be free. And these are my concerns because right now the salt is a community asset. I mean, I live by the salt. I've got, um, I've got a 60 year old boy who goes every Sunday to a church to skate. Okay, you can't, you can't, it's only just half an hour. 
for if this goes ahead, people like myself, people people on low incomes in not have them on low income, people on low income <laughs> <laughs> um, will have to start paying to use an asset that's actually owned by the town council. And I am worried about that. Whilst I'd like to see us enter into a deal with wave leisure, I think we need to and I think this is sort of concern that was raised by Mrs. Wood if I understand correctly earlier. I would I would hate to see asking people to start paying for a service that's actually owned by themselves. It should be free. And every town can, I, mean, I, I know about, um, I used to be toilet parking in, 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 in ABC, I used to be parking in Lisbon. So I know places where people go, the public space, and they're free. And I will employ us that any, any deal we do should make sure that we retain these assets, this business is to be free at the point of delivery for the people of see <laughs> Um, there's no proposal to charge for anything that's free at the moment. The only addition that could be there is it depends on funding that's available. Could you know, have <coughs> grant funding? But for example, if uh, if we have leisure, we're able to secure the services of a, a, a skate a skateboard coach or something like that that came in, and people would perhaps pay to be coached. But that's an optional thing. The use of the skate park would still be free. So that's, that's the type of venture that the mayor look at doing. And the same with the tennis. If you want to be coached and pay for that, well, you can, or you can continue to use it the way. But the tennis is charged at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not going to change. Although well, it's not enforced, it's not charged. But everything else, the same with fitness. If you want to take part in the fitness class, then you will pay for it. Or you can just use the outdoor gym free of charge. It's just giving people the options, really. I'm both relieved actually that many, most of my colleagues here have picked up on most of the points that I had, I had bulleted for, the, for this agenda item. Um, I do have some concerns whether the, about the time period that this proposal is due to take, take place. Uh, I do feel that we are perhaps being rushed into a decision over a community no. asset that we are effectively proposing this evening or will be proposing is outsourced to a third party for 20 years. Um, and, and I think really that we have to look at um, not only uh, the management of the facility and the services that the company will provide, but also look at um, what it brings back to the council in terms of its revenues. Everyone here knows that I've been on FGP for some significant amount of time, and it's always something that's close to my heart. The um, concessions do bring in a significant um, amount of money right now into the council and I would want to see from the um, uh, management company from Wave Leisure some assurances or cash projections in their business plan for management of our asset uh, over the next 5, 10, 15 years. I'm also <coughs> surprised to see in this document that there's no references uh, to Councillor Latham's points about um, uh, contracts, lease, lease agreements, uh, break periods, um, review periods. And more importantly, even than that, I think the point you raised about a service level agreement, which is completely absent from this right now, and not something that I think we should uh, make a decision on in the absence of such an agreement, have a visibility. If we want to know what we'll be getting um, from the people of Seaford uh, through the outsourcing of this asset is a very considerable amount of time, and, and perhaps not something that this council will get a chance to review over a 20 year period. Um, well, for certainly my lifetime, that's for sure. Yeah, I was just going to um, talk about the same um, points here that Councillor Dimiji said and uh, Councillor Burfield. Um, it's, <coughs> to me, it sounds like we need to hear a lot more about this. I would like to see a presentation some, of some sort, maybe, you know, if, if, if possible, because it's a huge thing. 20 years. It's a long time, and I feel right now, put on spot to make such decision, it wouldn't be beneficial just to rush things like this. I think things take time, and we should really um, look into this with more depth. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I don't think I've had my question answered yet, but I mean, following further on to that, I mean, in June, the, the, the council here, we had a presentation on. Was it July? We had a presentation on the loads of maps and documents, Impact Cafe, Electronic Cafe, in the salts and everything. And now you've got a completely different document, which is, mm -hmm. as the other council has said, it's been swapped over. There's no, there's no time scales for both the Electronic Cafe 
and all this, and all the salts in detail. Twenty years for the salts. Nothing like the iconic. So is the iconic cafe, and they've now been deferred anyway. No. I think, I think the, the Iconic Cafe is, as it says in section 112, um, it's a partnership with Lewis Districts, yeah. we're not in control of that. Mm. They're leading on the Iconic pro uh, projects. Um, they, at the last Seaford Impact meeting, but one, they were going to do an exercise of finding what the response was, the interest was in that. Unfortunately that wasn't done by the time we had the last meeting of that, so they're now doing that again. Um, but again, it comes back to the point, we, we've got a gun against our head. If we want to, we either go back to doing a three year lease, yeah. that, that time is ticking now, we can't do anything about it. The lease, the license is gonna run out in March mm. for, the, for the cafe as it is. There's nothing we can do about that. Uh, so you either, you either look at a different option uh, or you go out to the tender again, which we we start to do in January, because we'll be doing it for the other two concessions, the ice cream concessions as well. They will all be going out to tender in January, so we haven't got that much time to consider options. That's that's the problem. It's either you continue as is, but we know there's problems with that, yeah. or you look at another option, and that's where we are. Tonight isn't about the detail. Uh, you know, there's been a few points made about. Uh, contracts and, and things like that. We're not about the deal. This is about the principle. If you want to go ahead with this in principle, then we need to come back with, or uh, we're pleasure need to come back with the detail that you want to see. Uh, and that, that's what we'll come back to the next council meeting. Thank you, Chair. Um, just quickly, um, I think it's an excellent opportunity for Seaford, um, and I think we should really seriously just let this go. Let James um, get the hand with it all and get something to all. I take on board what Councillor Burfield has said, and um, yes, maybe that might be an idea to put that, include that, James, if you can. Yeah, but I think it's an excellent opportunity for, for the uh, younger generation and it um, inspires others you know, to, to use that area. Yeah. Can I just mention the finance as well? It's a good point, uh, Councillor Burfield mentioned that at the moment we. As far as the finance goes for the income from things, it's all subject to a bid that people make um, at the beginning of their license period. The proposal with this is, is that we would split the profits 50-50 with Wave Leisure. So after the running costs of the facility have been accommodated, any profit is split 50-50. Their financial projections at the moment is that it would be in the region of 16,800 first year that we would receive, which is about what we receive at the moment, 16,000, sorry which is about what we receive, which is 16,800 at the moment um, from the cafe on the license. So that whilst we can't guarantee any figures, uh, we can't guarantee the license would be the same as it is now uh, until we've the tender. It could be more, it could be less, but we don't know that until we've the tender. Yeah, I'd just like to thank you for the foreman and I don't think we need to, we mustn't let this opportunity go by because ways are well thought of the ideal organisation for this type of project and uh, as someone who uses their services I think you want to keep in the room do as well uh, so I would say although we do need to get the uh, dot the I's and the T's um, it's not an opportunity that we should let pass I'd just like to reiterate my point here that it's not that we should let the opportunity go past, it's that we should look into it more carefully. I completely understand this is a unique opportunity, great investment into the town for the children, but at the moment I see this as a branch of the leisure centre at the seafront. If we see it, it's exactly what's going to be. So why can't we just look into it with all the details of it to make sure things such as a skate um, activity, as a basketball, netball, won't be charged for because that's what they do at the leisure centre. I just want to make sure that everything in the sort is free because people need a park where everything is free. I am not comfortable with <coughs> charging for activities because if they have the priority to charge for something there, and then I come with my child at 10 o'clock on a, on a Tuesday, he wants to play, I'm sorry, it's been used for lessons, they won't be able to play. That's how I view this. Yeah. 
I, people might not agree, but that's exactly what's going to happen. If you're right there and you want to leave the skate park, but tuition is taking place that is charged for, <coughs> what's going to come as a priority is the people who are paying for it and not the residents of Seaford. That's why I think this should be looked into detail and everything, all the dots in the eyes and crossing the T's to make sure these things are secure <coughs> for the people of Seaford. And that's why I, I believe that we should not rush into this. Wave Leisure Centre has a huge interest in not going to run away from this. It's a lot of profit. But <coughs> they're not stupid. Um, just listening to all the, my fellow councillors, I think, I think it's a good way to is a compromise between, because I think, taking ca Councillor Campbell's point, that I think it's good that <coughs> we are all actively engaged in 20 years <coughs> from now, or look at as all town council from now, okay, like we've got like, a long time to consider. And I think we incorporated James's idea, if we could do some sort of mass email where councillors do feel like included, because we, at the same time, taking account of Bullman's point of view, this is an opportunity we cannot do this. <coughs> and I think we have to appreciate the practicalities that we can't have meetings, but I think if councillors are involved to a degree, I think it's <coughs> the best way to get some success out of it. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I think <coughs> um, perhaps Councillor Campbell's missed the point a little bit. As we clearly said earlier, the facilities that are free there will remain free. Um, as, so it's just a nation they're going to introduce coaching to certain fields. Um, <coughs> if you went into the gym at the Wade Leisure Centre at the Downs, for example, you could go in there of your own free will, or you could have a coach that would be beside you whilst you were doing the training. And I would assume that that's the sort of thing that they would um, try and um, push forward. You know, the fact that so it wouldn't actually affect directly that the whole area is shut down specifically for so other people use at the same time. It'll be the fact that they have one on one training, like a person trying to try and being down there. Those um, bits and pieces that are going on, I think, um, perhaps can be missed the point there, Chair. So uh, I still think it's a great idea. Um, I'm, am I right in saying that the um, cafe <coughs> still have the Martello kiosk? Is that the same? So they're not going to lose a huge amount of, they lose some trade, but they won't lose the business, which is quite important. Um, so uh, hopefully they'll, um, you know, they'll, they'll look for the benefit of Seaford in this and, and, and not be too uh, big enough with some success with their lease on the other side. So thank you, Chair. I personally believe that Carol has got a valid point. And, um, because Wave Leisure um, is not a charity, it works for a living like everybody else. And, uh, well, I'd say it's, 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 it's a self funding charity. Actually, it's not for profit, it's not charity. It's not for profit. Yeah. But the thing being is, it still has to make a profit to run itself. Mm -hmm. So, Chair, we'll just come back quickly. It's, you know, it's basically that they have trainers there for one to one for certain fields that have boots that people can either use or they don't use. It won't affect directly other people in that area using the sites at the same time. That, that's what I think the point has been missed there. So, I think it's actually... You could put a little rider in, couldn't you, saying you can't close a venue down for training. The when, it, when, it, when, it, when it's open to the yes, general public. the report, I don't think there's any amendment. Yeah, sorry, I just want to, to get back. I'm not missing the point. That's exactly what's going to happen. When you go to the leisure centre, for example, and there's a hall being used for basketball, you cannot go there in the middle of their basketball game with your ball and start playing. The same thing is going to happen at the sorts. If some of the facilities are, that they built are going to be used, People won't be able to use it for free. It's a fact. I'm not missing anything. Um, you might want to disagree with that, but that's what it is. Um, the other thing is, I would just, as when I say as a working party, fair enough, we don't have a lot, a lot of time to do it. But as Rob suggested, a good email um, chain or you know some gatherings of some sort. But please don't don't just pass this like that, look into it, analyse it, because it is a good opportunity, it's a fantastic opportunity, but believe me, they're not going to go anywhere. This is also a good business for them, not just for us. So we've got to bear that in mind. And as you said, um, Chair, um, 
they are, they, I, I think you've got muddled up in your words there about the non-profit side of things, but they still have to make some money to run their business healthily. So let's just keep that in mind. Just study the contract, get to see what's being offered. Just don't rush into it. Why rush into it now? It's 20 years, 20 years, thank you. Yes, I agree to agree to it. 100% agree with Carol because this is not a part of a branch of leather center because <coughs> it's our community SME <coughs> town. And only one thing is because lots of these big cities, the, like few places will be like souls, and only our people only the souls. Um, I mean, agree to this. No, we don't want to our you know they engage it for the you know the private lesson. Mm -hmm. If they want to do, they can go up the other center and all of them. Just, just a quick one. I, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, and obviously we've got some very assistant councillors here, but it isn't where they're there, they're an outsourced part of the um, district council anyway, so they wouldn't necessarily be remind me of the major facilities in, in 20 years' time anyway. So, but I mean, I could be completely wrong here, but I don't know what content, I, I don't know what content they've got at the moment, but it is part of the district council essentially. Nice. But it, yeah, but is it? It's it's part of the council. They nice. they're running the facilities on their behalf. Nice. Mm -hmm. And that's that contract did you complete? Contract, yeah. On behalf of Lewis's council, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, they they taken on the contracts. For yeah, for, from Lewis district. Well, not just from Lewis. They run them all over there. Oh right, yeah, yeah, I know. Not like Freedom Leisure, but in this area, it's the Lewis district council. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So it's yes. part of the part of the system, effectively. No, it isn't. It's not just well, it's constitutionally a separate organisation. Yes, I know that. Yeah. You, you saw what I was getting at. They, they, they deliver contracts for many organisations, yeah. including Eastbourne, yeah. Bill and Lewis, and now a lot of wording as well. Yeah. So they, they provide them around the, mm -hmm. the Sussex area. Mm -hmm. They're not dependent on any one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, no, I understand that. And if, if Lewis District Council didn't exist tomorrow, Wave Leisure still would. There's nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's not connected. Uh, just to clarify, I, I think I'm right in saying that Wave Leisure is a, uh, a, a limited company, but limited by guarantee, not by shares. <coughs> Therefore, it is a not-for-profit limited company that can sell its services to any organisation it wishes. Its largest client, I think, is the District Council at the present time, turned over £4.5 million. Uh, just to say again, that it's an excellent opportunity with in the, in the past, we've had issues, which I, I believe, with um, tenants that haven't paid. Um, we're going into a professional body here, essentially, and obviously we can guarantee the rent, and we'll have to chase up rent with these, so I just think it's a silly opportunity to place. So, I think it's good. There seems to be a bit of confusion about what we're agreeing to try and agree to tonight. We've talked a lot about detail, and, and I think the devil's in the detail, obviously, but that's when you come to, at the very beginning, uh, Councillor Latham said that we, we have a contract that's agreed and brought back to the council. The detail you're talking about will be covered by that, and and that's then for the council to decide on that night. We don't, we're not going to agree or disagree tonight on the actual specifics of, of when paid activities take place, which they already do in the SOLTS. If you go down the salts uh, on a Sunday, most of the grass area is taken up by footballers who pay for the privilege. Mm -hmm. The same as the rugby players do, the same as the cricket players do. Areas of the park are taken up by different paid activities at any given time already. The tennis takes up a lot of the area that's paid for. The football does, the rugby does, and the cricket does. The majority of the park actually already has people going on there that pay to use it. But it's not 100% of the time. And that doesn't cause anybody an inconvenience. The, the devil's in the details. So if we, if the concern is that perhaps they could have paid activities all the time in the skate park, well, you limit the paid activities in the contract. That's, but we're not going to do that tonight in a full council meeting. Best will in the world. I think, I think what we need to do is take away from this that the concern of the council is that it doesn't become a paid for park more than a public park. The majority has got to be free. And I think that's what we've got to feed back, and we've got to get that included in the contract in, in specific ways. But that's the detail. <coughs> we're not going to do the details tonight. Yeah. 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 Ye
I think that was what you could tell some of us in particular was suggesting. Mm -hmm. I think that, I mean, I think um, it, I, I, I would like to propose that we hit open motion. But before I propose the motion, can I just ask a question with time to apply? The 20 year lease is ways I'm able to make it a 10 year lease. I think the, the only issue is the shorter the lease, um, the, the less the investment. You know, so if you, 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 you know businesses, you know the run. <laughs> um, if, if you've got security for 20 years, you're prepared to put more in the beginning. One thing we have made very clear is that they are capital rich. They can, they can invest heavily at the beginning. They've got money in reserve to do that. And I was going to suggest that we, we, we've all got concerns in, in, in various ways. Perhaps we can just write our email our concerns to the town clerk. If we want to, we can always copy for fellow councillors. But um, on that basis, I was actually going to propose that recommendation one, that we agree to enter into a suitable agreement with Wave Ledger. Um, in along the lines with what Councillor Leighton mentioned, you come back to the house with the, the um, head of terms of the contract. Um, we comment in the first of April. I think we're looking at the recommendations. Recommendation one says to agree to enter into a suitable arrangement. We're not talking about the contract here. This is an intent to make the contract. And I think from that point of view, we're, we're rather taking <coughs> it. It's a, if we say yes, it's a deal done, and it's not. Mm -hmm. It's the first stage. It's, if you like, an invitation to take. <coughs> the tender itself. So, uh, I, I think we might be reading more into recommendation one because recommendation two to negotiate the detail, and again, that's obviously got to come back to full council. So, I think we're, we're moving a step ahead of where we actually are. <coughs> Oh. <laughs> actually, the point I was about to make in the, well, there's two points actually. The first point, does Council Leighton recall making a proposal early in the evening on this item? <laughs> <laughs> I did, and I've not changed my view. Okay, so there is actually a proposal within the table, so that's a point of order. Uh, secondly, um, Councillor Worcester is correct. I think the recommendations as they are written are misleading. That's a big, not to be uh, too harsh to the clerk, because as I read them, they are very definitive. They ask us this evening to uh, enter into an arrangement with Wave Pleasure, which I don't think tonight we're willing to do. Uh, the second part I had reservations for. The last council got into a lot of trouble by delegating decisions and uh, negotiations to the previous town clerk. And I'm very reluctant um, on point two for town clerk to be allowed to enter into all the arrangements with wave leisure without any consultation with other councillors. Could I, could I suggest that the second part is changed? Um, not that, the end, that I enter into it, but <coughs> negotiate the arrangement, the, the, the details and arrangements, um, and report back to four councillors. Which is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, just to clarify that, um, I, I think what we're saying here is to bring back the proposal, uh, or his terms, as we said earlier, to full council, and that's the caveat that ought to go into part two. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my concern is the existing cafe on the source is rather an old building. Would Wade be willing to build new premises? Or would the iconic cafe? Uh, it's a bit of confusion between the two. We've got this iconic cafe, which is going to be really wonderful, apparently. <laughs> and you've got the wave leisure taking the, is it taking the existing cafe, or the new building. I really don't know what's going on there. Well, my own personal view about the Iconic Cafe, um, the cynic in me said the Iconic Cafe was put forward to take our eye off the battle. Agreed. Who's <laughs> 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 on the chair? Who's going to put a vote on the table? Maybe we should have a vote on this proposal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank
with that, that the town clerk is authorised and negotiates uh, to authorise uh, to, just to negotiate the details mm. and come back at the next In consultation with councillors, yeah. I think if we had that in, yeah. so I'll, yeah. I'll certainly, yeah. Brad, everyone, if you can feed in what you are you want us to cover, please do. Have you got enough time to do this now, though? That's a very bad point. Yeah, it's such an important thing, we'll have to find the time. Do we have a proposal for that? And a seconder? I think absolutely they have to Negotiate. Yeah. So it's one, it's one item. Yeah. Now. Yeah. To, to allow the town clerk to negotiate in with consultation, in in consultation with council and return with heads of terms for council's consideration. Yeah. 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 But I, 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 I think what would be useful as well is as part of that that the council agrees to this proposal in principle. Mm -hmm. Because I think we need to yes. give we have that reassurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If that's part of the Consider report 96 stroke 15 providing a progress report with Herdis House and seeking decisions relating to Herdis House. Pages 47 to 48. Thank you, Chair. Uh, obviously, there's a report there. This has previously been reported back to Council in the past where we originally uh, it was agreed to end into a partnership uh, uh, in principle, at least with the new tenant. And this is just to confirm those arrangements, really. Um, as people will see, the development's moved on from the outside. I saw one councillor looking at it last night. Um, the, the inside has moved on significantly as well. Um, there's a lot of work gone in to refurbishing the building, a lot at the expense of the new tenant. He's been paid the licence for the time being, um, but now he wants to move on, uh, as do we, to enter into a 25-year lease, um, which will be a self-repairing lease. Um, also, that. Uh, he's looking for those various permissions so that he doesn't need to come back to us in the future to change permissions on the building. It would subject, it would just simply be a planning application. Um, and there's also the other issue, which is the, uh, the pending litigation on the matter, which is separate from the existing tenant, obviously. And we are at the stage now where we have exchanged documents <coughs> on that. Um, and it's now a case of uh, getting legal opinion on the strength of our case and the strength of uh, the case of the uh, former tenant so that we can then make an informed judgment as a council on the best way forward in dealing with that particular issue. It may be that you want to deal with them separately to start off with, um, but I'm open to questions on either side. Um, can I just ask, are there any covenants on use at the moment? I mean, the, 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 the new tenant is running it as a camera store, and I assume he intends to pick that up. Uh, so these things about restaurants and cafes, I know they're maybe maybe future plans. But he, he's, he, the intention is just to use the upstairs as the, the, the college part of it. Right. And the downstairs is something different. <coughs> uh, two and a bit floors, there's an attic as well. To use those as the, the sort of the academy side of things. And, and then looking at alternative use for the ground floor is what he's looking at. Is there any, are there any covenants at the moment to prevent him? No, there's no covenants no. on that. No. Uh, is, is there a contradiction between the first bullet in 1.1 where it says that the tenant will uh, uh, pay for the replacement of the rotten windows with UPVC and the financial appraisal, appraisal which seems to imply or state that the council <coughs> will pay for the windows? Yeah, it's definitely not the tenant. What it, it, it is us, uh, that is part of the contract, sorry, that's um, contradicting me. The, the existing windows within the existing contract to replace the wooden ones, or repair the wooden ones, is 4,000. 4, but they're unrepairable when they've taken the paint off and they're just rotten. Yeah. 
to replace them with your PVC ones, we've had a tender of a quarter of 8,000. Mm -hmm. So there's a 4,000 addition on the original contract, but which will be paid for with the existing arrangement, which is we are paying the, for the work 50 50. Yeah. Council pay half and he pays half. Okay. But we then discount that from his rent going forward. Could that be clear on the first bullet? Yeah. Um, I think this building was one of our uh, worst nightmares in the last administration, to be quite honest. And it looks to me now that we've got a, a resolution to overcome that problem. We've got a tenant in there who is financially stable. He's done an awful lot of work to improve the building. The building is now safe and secure, it's dry, and he has a long-term plan taking it forward. So I'd like to recommend that we accept this proposal. All those in favour? Yeah, okay. right. Item 10, Seaford Tree Wardens. Tree, mm -hmm. tree planting. To consider reports. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, we haven't done uh, the pending legal first one. Item 3, and the last report. Resolution was through um, items one and two. For one and two. Sorry, I should have made that clear. Oh. If, I that one yeah. so if, there's, if there's anyone who has any questions <coughs> about the case, or if you want to take one out, either way. This is the only way we're going to resolve this problem, I've got to listen to Mr Mayor, is to get proper legal yes. advice and then take it forward from there. regarding seeking approval for street tree planting, pages 49 to 53. I think we should just add that we, the two wardens are doing a fantastic job mm -hmm. and, and I think they should be congratulated. Um, as uh, Marion's substitute, I haven't had a chance to log one of the meetings yet, but uh, I've seen all the minutes and so on. They yeah, really are doing a good job. Mm -hmm. It struck me that um, uh, quite a, uh, some of the costs are covered by donations from members of the public. It's just a, a, a thought, really, a passing thought. Uh, we, I think we've run out of space for in memoriam benches on the seafront. <laughs> but it struck me that maybe we could have in memoriam trees uh, with plaques um, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the family concerned could make a donation to the trees. I don't know what you think about that. Chair, could it, we, we, in the process of putting in a, a brochure of what people can do memorials for instead of just benches. Mm -hmm. So we. It's, a good point. Uh, we're looking at other things, even even in payments of the equipment. So some people may wish to, to, to provide that rather than the payment. Uh, we're looking at picnic benches as well, and, and the public seating area, the um, sorry, the um, performance area on the Martello. So we're looking for a number of people to contribute towards that to provide the performance area. So we, we, we put together a brochure, which will then go to, because we still have about 60 people on the way there. So. If we go to them, I'm sure we'll, we'll get an option of funds. We've got one lady who wants to plant a tree anyway, just you know, help them for ourselves down the road. So <coughs> that's good. Okay. Thank you. Hi, can I just bring something up? This has been quite a long time ago now, so I'm not even sure if it's been brought up already. Um, what happened um, 
at the fields, Charlton's and fields, um, where a bunch of trees got cut down by a um, council worker. I don't think that's been talked about, so I'd just like to um, talk about it. I wonder if it would be something that we should do um, as a council to send a letter if it has not been sent already to apologise to the tree wardens about that because um, as, a, as far as I remember it was a fantastic day for the <coughs> community with the planting of the trees and then one day on the secret notice board uh, someone notices that the trees got all chopped up and um, I would like to have my condolences on the loss of these trees and um, my apologies, my personal apology to <coughs> Marjorie Diamond with the, with the tree wardens because to me that was horrible what happened and unfortunately as much as we can replace the trees we cannot replace um, what happened on that day which there were a lot, it was a fantastic community day people getting together to plant the trees um, there were grandparents with children um, unfortunately those trees are no longer there so I um, just wanted to mention this I think it's worth mentioning now for the community Just to say, I don't know whether you notice it, but the cutting down by Billy Stisbrick's contractor of the trees did in fact make um, South East Television breakfast about a two minute uh, photo of the field and so on. And of course the, the guarantee that um, Lewis's uh, contractor would replace all the trees and the plant. Yes, a tree warden at a very good job, yes, and why, well, which place will he have those trees? You know, personally, I, I come from a very green area where I'm from, you know, and when is the middle, I get upset when, you know, if some tree cut or something, mm -hmm. and trees is uh, good atmosphere, oxygen, and greenery for everything, good for, <coughs> good for everything, and we should be placed where there's lots of rotation. And two years ago, we, me and my husband, one group, and lots of people, elder people, even they can't deal. And lots of uh, seafood elder person are very good with doing the tree planting. Mm -hmm. And two years ago, we side of uh, bottom of Coast Garden, Bramba Road, that oh. side. Mm -hmm. And it was for minus three. And me, my husband was counseled, I was with him, and lots of elder mm -hmm. people, even can't deal with them, planting some trees. Trees are wonderful. Just to ask, have the trees in Charlington Field been replanted yet? Does anybody know? Do we have a date and it will be? Um, we're not on the agenda at the moment. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, um, the answer is that the land is not to take the town council. The, 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 the contractors weren't to the town councils. It wasn't to take the town council matter, although uh, our facilities manager is being helped the tree wardens remedy the situation. Um, that was just voluntarily, so it's, it's not a town council issue. In fact, Mr. Mayor Burley's who was a contractor, he once already published an apology in the press and on Facebook and everywhere. I think probably we should accept that. Yes. <laughs> Item 12, solar panels at the view. Oh, World War, World War One project proposal to consider report 9715 presenting a request for the council support with a World War One.